Guys, I want to talk to you today about how to make a great cold call. Cold calls are scary. You probably feel a little something in your gut when you think about calling a stranger that doesn't want to talk to you. But it's possible to learn techniques that make it a little easier and that set you up for more success. And so when you pick up the phone, this is what you say, or at least something you could say. Hey, this is Chris Vaughn from Best Thing Global, and I realize I'm calling you completely out of the blue. So before I go any further, do you have 30 seconds for me to tell you why I'm calling? Then you can decide if it makes sense to talk further. The first thing you want to do when you're making a cold call is to diffuse the sales-related defenses that are going up psychologically from the customer. Imagine when you get a cold call, if someone just dives right into a pitch, that's a total turnoff. It sounds like a telemarketer. You're not even taking the opportunity to consider that you might be interrupting someone's day. So if you can show any type of awareness that you're interrupting a client's day and show that level of social awareness, that goes a long way to diffusing those defense mechanisms that go off. Once you diffuse the defense mechanisms and you get buy-in for 30 seconds of their time, it's time to deliver a value proposition. And it's usually best to do that in the form of a story. A story that shares outcomes for similar relevant clients. And if those outcomes are relevant or interesting, you set up the meeting, it's that simple. So, okay, perfect, I appreciate the time. We're actually working with a similar company in XYZ industry, and they were facing this challenge. We helped them overcome the challenge and produce this result. We saved them this much money. We helped them get to market faster. We helped them open up a new revenue stream. Does any of this sound remotely interesting to you? And if so, do you have 20 minutes next week to connect over a call where I'm not calling you completely out of the blue so we can talk about if there's a fit for partnership? That's just an example of something you could say. Hopefully it's helpful. Now, if you actually do some research and you know something about the account, maybe you can lead with context uh, saying, I saw you just got 15 million in funding and you're looking to invest that into XYZ initiative. Well, we help other companies achieve those types of results and accomplish those types of initiatives. So, do you have some time to catch up around that? I think that's another great way to start a cold call is to lead with context. So another example of leading with context is saying, I saw you know XYZ executive and I actually know them too. I helped their company achieve these results. Would love to see if we could do the same for you. Do you have 20 minutes next week? Or you could do your due diligence and research and see that this executive at the company you're trying to break into went to the same university you did. And you call that out right up front. Hey, I saw you're also at Georgetown Hoya, Hoya Saxa. Um, was hoping to connect around this and that. Do you have 20 minutes? So when you're leading with context, you're kind of owning the fact that, hey, we should be talking. You're going in and talking to someone as if you already know them, which I encourage you to take on that mindset in general. And it's a little more bullish if you're someone who's, uh, you know, really bold and brash and confident. Maybe you just go in and, hey, we work with other Vertex portfolio companies and we help them do this. And, probably makes sense to talk, do you have any time? So you could take on that approach instead of asking for permission um, you know, to share why you're calling. Now both strategies are great, it just depends on what you're more comfortable with and what fits your natural style. Now I do wanna call out a few things. Uh, one, I ask for 20 minutes because it seems less intimidating than a full 30 minutes, 45 or an hour for a first call. So it lowers the commitment level that the customer has to put in up front. And they're, let's be real, they're not invested, you're a random guy or girl calling them. So once you do hook them for the meeting, what you can do is, if the conversation's going well, as you approach the 20 minute mark, you can call out, hey, we're coming up on time. By the way, pro tip, it's really important to be respectful of time, and if you can show that to the customer, they will appreciate it so much. Anyways, we're coming up on time. Uh, do you have five or 10 more minutes just to carry on the conversation? If it's going well, they'll say yes. And so at least to hook them, lower the, the commitment uh, level early and ask for 20 minutes. Another thing um, I wanna tell you guys, and I was in a conversation with a buddy the other day that moved up the ranks in tech sales real fast. He said um, the reason he was so successful 
as an account development representative and with cold calling was because he did some things different and one was just talking to the customer in a really calm manner as if you know they, they were buddies they already knew each other like they should be talking so if you can kind of meditate up front or get yourself that mindset of I I should be talking to this person it's like a cold calling my mom it's not a cold call you know that goes a long way now one thing you might face in the conversation on, on the cold call in the moment is objections they might say oh we've got another partner that does what you do or it sounds too expensive, we can't afford a big change right now. Well, you could channel your inner hostage negotiator and leverage some tactics that um, Chris Voss would uh, encourage. Chris Voss is one of the top hostage negotiators in the world and I encourage you to read his book, Never Split the Difference. But one thing he does is he, I believe it's called mirrors, right? He, he talks about mirroring. So, oh, too expensive? And you stop. And the customer will just start going and going and going and share all this information. You don't want to make a change. They start going and talking about it. And maybe you can handle the objection. Uh, maybe a lot of times objections are there's a gap in understanding. There's a lot of fear and uncertainty and doubt that you can put to ease. It's your job to be ready to address those objections up front. So before you make a cold call, I encourage you to understand what are the common objections I will see. Uh, in terms of what I'm selling, and can I be ready to uh, have some uh, answers to those objections? But first off, just kind of mirror back and parrot back the objection and see what they say. So to wrap things up, if the customer picks up, that's great. If they don't pick up, which is most of the time, you got to leave a voicemail. I encourage you to do that. And what a voicemail should look like is a crisp message maybe uh, state your name and relevant challenge and then keeping it somewhat mysterious and asking them to call you back and saying and telling them in the message that I will be following up in other channels via email. So, hey Jim, this is Chris from XYZ Company. Maybe you don't even see your company name, say your company name. So, hey Jim, this is Chris. We helped other companies in, in the Vertex portfolio achieve these results. Give me a call back at this number. I'd love to talk about what we could do for you. I'm also going to be following up via email um, pretty soon if it's easier for you to follow up that way. And then in that email, put the subject line as voicemail, one word, and just keep it real simple in your email. Just briefly allude to what you might have said in the uh, voicemail, maybe give a little more context. I feel like when you start to get multi-threaded like that, it's really helpful. And obviously, if someone doesn't pick up a cold call, then you need some way of putting the lure out there for them to bite on your sales messaging. So one more thing I gotta throw in there in terms of your actual ask for a meeting is throwing in the uh, incentive of new information and telling the customer that, hey, if you take a call with us, I promise you at the least you'll walk away with some new insights on your market and even you'll start to think differently about your own company and these new um, ideas could impact the future state of your business, your future decisions, even if you don't go with us. So that's key, right? There's a reason to talk. There's no pressure. Like maybe there won't be a fit, but you're gonna at least get some new information. There's something in it for you. So leverage that to get someone in the meeting and then prepare your ass off to crush the meeting and wow. So guys, I hope this was helpful. I'm super passionate about sales. I've seen how it's enabled a great lifestyle for me and helped me develop all these skills that I can take with me for the rest of my life. And I wanna encourage you guys to be successful in sales, whether you're in an actual technology sales role or you just wanna develop those skills for um, whatever business you're trying to start or want to even use them in, in your own career, whatever that may be. So definitely let me know your guys' sales tactics around cold calling. I'd love to hear from you. I am no sherp on the hill. I'm still learning, still growing, and I'm always looking for new strategies. There's no silver bullet in sales or in life. But one thing's for sure, we're gonna to grow together and learn together. So if you found any of this remotely interesting, I gotta ask, do you have 10 to 20 minutes next week to catch my next video? At the least, you're going to gain some new insights, maybe laugh here and there, and learn a little bit. So, 
do it. 